Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Let's get ready for Gnosis. Now, uh, I've recently shown the uh, original uh, Galen Hieronymus, actually T. Galen Hieronymus, otherwise known as Thomas, um, but he's known as Galen or Galen uh, Hieronymus. He's a famous radionic practitioner and actually had his uh, aloptic energy devices patented. So it did go through the patent office, and this is important. And he was smart enough to know how to do that, while others have been rejected. But there are several patented um, uh, radionic devices um, in the United States, and of course, many more across the world. Um, but it's important to understand who this is. Now, uh, his popularity was brought to the attention of the public again in the book Mind Machines You Can Build that was published in 1992 uh, by a G. Harry Stein, who um, showed his machines, talked about it, etc. But little... Little is known about any radionic people, really, and there are bits and pieces you can find here and there. And, of course, uh, as time goes on, these people are being forgotten. Now, his technology has been picked up um, uh, through uh, other companies now who um, worked with him, um, whose now uh, children are taking over the um, manufacturing of uh uh, these machines. It was Peter Kelly, and Peter Kelly uh, has passed away, and now his son is making what are considered, uh, we hope that these are copies, or good copies, and they've improved upon them. But it shows that there is someone still carrying this on, and the family is keeping it going, and apparently there are some courses and other things, so you can check out the Peter Kelly organization for more information. They also sell these types of um, machines uh, as well. But it's not. It's unlikely most people are going to jump on these because they are fairly expensive. But let's get back to Hieronymus, who was pretty active and, of course, has an interesting history again. And a lot of people don't understand uh, because of lying, dumb bunkers and idiot skeptics who like to slander these people instead of looking for truth. Truth is what works. And he certainly was able to show that his technology worked. The problem is, is who wants to replace their technology with your technology, especially when it's so odd and different. But, you know, that puts you out of business. And then you have to go behind this person and give them that support. You know, when we live in this horrific money-crazed society, nothing is produced of value. It's all down to the buck and not really what works. It's who can market best and who's in control. Now, we haven't needed fossil fuels for over a hundred years. We don't need any physical fuels whatsoever. There's plenty of fuels out there, particularly hydrogen, uh, that is a perfect energy and can be used in any internal combustion engine. Everybody could have one of these in their home, in their car, etc., and nobody would need any gas. We don't need all these goofball battery cars. Why is that not happening? Well, it's not happening because there is nobody to make the money off of it. So, um, but hydrogen cars have been around from every single major manufacturer, from Ford to BMW, for over 50 years now. Uh, mostly all of the kinks have been worked out, but you, certainly uh, this could be easily brought up to a perfected level and we're all done. No pollution, no nothing, free energy. Why would you want to give free energy to anybody? Well, you don't. You want to make money off of them. You want to sell them gasoline. You want to pump the crap out of the ground. Now, the point is we need oil for a whole bunch of other things other than burning it. One of, the, one of the biggest tragedies in this world is taking precious oil and burning it for energy. Uh, we need it to make all sorts of stuff with. So uh, this needs to change, but it never will because we live on a worldwide economy of oil. And there, uh, most countries in the world live off of their oil production. 
Russia, most of uh, the prosperous places in Central and South America, uh, the United States, uh, large parts of Europe. All of this is based in an oil economy, which is a toxic, horrible one. We need to raise the price of oils and use it for uh, what it is good for, making plastics and other things in a more controlled way. But plastic is a terrible product generally that ends up going back to the... Um, to the way it was actually given, which is this powder that is melted into forms. But eventually it goes back into that. So we've got some real problems with with all of plastic in general. But there's certainly ways we can get over that. I believe it takes eight gallons of oil to make one auto tire. So uh, we have to keep that in mind. So it's not like we're uh, getting rid of it, but shifting over uh, people giving up their wealth for something else is not going to happen because they don't really care unless they're forced by government. And this is where government always has to come in. And then um, government, which comes in to solve a problem, then starts to be creating problems because of their corruption. But let's talk about Hieronymus again. Hieronymus is an interesting guy. And, you know, a lot of people, as he said, think these are some sort of goofballs. Uh, Hieronymus served in the Rainbow Division in World War I and later graduated from Officer's Candidate School. Okay, so this is, not you know, it just shows you how old this guy or how far he goes back. So he was in World War I. Um, and he later uh, showed to be a smart enough person that he could go to officer's candidate school, which has always been difficult and requires a certain level of education, uh, classroom understanding. For 30 years, he was a professional engineer working for the Kansas City Power and Light Company. So for 30 years, he was working for the uh, Kansas City Power, a major city and an important job. He was credited with the designing of phase locking system that connects power um, stations um, across the country. Well, it sounds to me that's very important. He somehow was able to connect power uh, generating stations across the country by being able to interconnect them. I'm assuming if someone needs more power, you could give it to them or take it away if they're not using it. This is very important. And very few people understand the fact that energy is generated and it if, um, and can't be stored. People don't understand that. He was also a licensed radio operator, lady become a senior member in the Institute of Radio Engineers. Um... So generally speaking, such highly influential positions were reserved exclusively for the brightest and best in the profession. So he performed at very high levels in um, the regular dumbadamia. So uh, this is important to understand. So this isn't just some goofball. Um, he then uh, started to get involved in these kind of machines. We're not entirely sure how he got into this study of energy, but it was uh, his understanding of eloptic energy, as he called it, uh, was tied into some sort of uh, electrical current or was a phase of that. But, you know, it's hard to say that, and I'm not going to go into long details here because it just gets too technical and boring. And we also need to understand uh, the time uh, that this is. Um, when he was going through all of this, uh, what was it, 40s, 50s, etc., he didn't have the same uh, pharmaceutical control over everything that you have today, at least not to the same extent. Uh, of course, that was there. Um, as it always is influencing things. But there wasn't too many other a a avenues for people to explore. So they were open to anybody that could help. Now we have schmientists telling us they know what's going on. Um, and one of the reasons he was able to get his patent is he's held in such high professional esteem and remained uncensored for his radionic work. And this was because he used his skills in radionics to assist regulatory agencies like the FDA and to solve complicated problems for big business, apparently. This is especially true when it came to analyzing substances. This is the error before the electron microscope. An example of this comes from my personal conversations with a colleague, Bob But. Uh, Butlick regarding um, work Hieronymus performed for 3M. And of course, you know, none of these things are talked about very much, and it's hard to say. Now, this is coming from the author of the book, The Secret Art, 
and we will put a link down below for you to uh, purchase this book, which is a very good uh, book on general radionics that gets into some interesting areas. Uh, so if you're a person involved in this area, reading this book is certainly will fill in some things. So you got to understand, this is an, you know, I don't know where people think radionics and certain came from. First of all, it was invented by a very uh, a genius uh, child prodigy called Albert Abrams, uh, who was a medical doctor. Um, and he's the one who came up with this concept. And because of the money involved in medicine, uh, all of these things become very confused. Um, but let's get talk about 3M. Everybody's heard of 3M. They make uh, many different plastics, tapes, and of course they're famous for their um, sticky uh, message notes. Um, so, um, which is an interesting story unto itself. But at the time, 3M was in product development for the famous uh, sticky notes. And while the glue adhered properly to the tape in laboratory trials, when it was produced in mass quantities and, and mass quantities, the glue was uh, coming off the actual cellophane um, or paper, whatever. Hieronymus was asked to use his patented radionic device to analyze the problem. He discovered that a trace element of a solvent previously carried in the container trucks transporting the chemicals was contaminating the adhesive. And this had not been uh, detected by normal methods because the trace amounts causing the problems were below what any other methodology uh, could detect. When the containers were changed after his discovery of this problem, the glue stayed on the tape. Um, so because he was savvy in the understanding of the dangers of radionic research, he was able to keep close contact with the authorities on uh, the legal parameters of his research. Even his patent, titled Detection and of Emanations from Materials uh, and Measurements of the Volumes Thereof, was in a particular language that would be easily acceptable by the scientific community. Yet the actual research would have been more um, based in a radionic understanding of it and would have been rejected. So this is very important to understand. Uh, uh, so he was smart. He worked in this area. He knew what it was. He wanted to get his patent. As I mentioned, I knew a guy who claimed to have worked with him. And of course, this is a hearsay story as well. Unfortunately, we don't have any verification as with everything. And you never will because they make sure they stop these kind of verifications from happening uh, as the kind of bogus stories you heard from uh, the Houdini camp when Houdini, uh, when Houdini was actually contacted and got information uh, through uh, psychics and mediums, uh, then they came up with this whole disgraceful story and calling his widow a drunken whore and everything else. Now, she may have had her problems, but that's very typical of the dumb bunker staff when they're full of criminals, sexual deviates, and everything else, otherwise known as skeptics, convicted felons, clown college graduates, sexual deviates, and everything else. That's lead the skeptic tribe. So as we uh, go through all this, we need to um, understand what is coming uh, on with all this stuff and how it's presented. So you can't believe anything. On the other hand, it's very difficult to get any kind of verification. Uh, so you have to run with these things. Does this make sense? Could he have found out what chemical was there? Well, that's what radionic uh, detection is so good for, picking up these um, really going down to subatomic particles, things that are just energetic in nature, uh, which have not materialized in anything physical yet. So you're able to pick up things like this very easily. But let's all, you know, there is a reason, and of course, um, what's an interesting observation is, is that Hieronymus began working in radio in 1913. After he received his license, um, he began working with uh, KDKA in Pittsburgh, PA, where he took part in the first ever radio broadcast, public radio broadcast, apparently, as a radio operator, electrical engineer with the uh, Rainbow Division in France during World War I. He worked to develop a wireless telephone. 
it was there that he observed certain metals and minerals had unusual properties or emanations, a discovery that led him to radionics. So he started working with all of that and um, uh, to kind of get, so what are these emanations? Of course, you know, when you're not, when you're back in 1913, 1920, uh, you're, you're not really prejudiced because you don't have all this information. So what is this? You know, we haven't really had radio and TV is 30 years away. So you're looking at any kind of emanations or subtle energies that are being projected out or can be. And of course, that's what radionics is all about. It was about projecting out energies, picking up energies. By 1930, Mihronis was working with radio radionics inventor J.W. Wigsworth to improve the pathocast. Now, the pathocast uh, was uh, originally coming from Albert Ainsum's um, osseocast. The pathocast was considered to be the most advanced condensed tuned radionic instrument ever, incorporating vacuum tubes for amplification and other electric electronic features. It's also important to realize uh, that by this time, Hiram has been designing his own version of the pathocast for Wigsworth. Mainstream doctors had adapted radionic type uh, therapies for clinical diagnosis and treatment throughout the country. In retrospect, one can sense a fusion uh, occurring of homeopathic medicine principles with electronic gear, which of course is true because uh, you're talking about homeopathics are pure energy basically. That's why when you keep cutting them when there's nothing left physical that they become stronger because they are just energetic in nature, which is how your body works. Um, so for that period in the 1920s and 30s, there seemed to be every reason to believe that radionic medical devices were evolving into a modern form of medical instrumentation. Uh, it was this favorable climate that clearly made the issuing of Hieronymus' uh, patent possible. Isn't that interesting? That's right. It was the time again. People were into that. If you tried to patent his today, you would never get it. But this was considered to be a quasi-science at the time, and that these things were new. This is before the um, the major push of drugs, uh, which could be um, controlled and uh, disseminated easily. Obviously, it's much easier to give someone a pill than put them on a machine and have that dialed in. Uh, and then pills could be watched better. So there certainly is a benefit through in using certain medications. But you got to remember that all medications are based for the treatment of the symptoms of, not the curing of. And when you get stuck in that, well, we just want to make sure uh, the symptoms are stopped. But, you know, this doesn't cure the problem. It's kind of a very goofball way of looking at things. Uh, it certainly is a good idea, meaning it's emergency medicine. You're not trying to stop a person from, uh, if they're bleeding out because they've been cut or something. Well, what we got to stop the cutting. We're going to make a knives out of rubber. Uh, yeah, well, let's start that project. Leave that guy here and we'll let him bleed out. Well, of course not. You want to go there and stop the bleeding. But when it's when you start to think that the 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 best way to treat bleeding is to put bandages on it, well, you've got a problem there. We got to see what caused the bleeding. So this is what we're stuck in now, and this is a very serious problem. And that's where all the money is. So it's never going to change it because um, medical science has failed. They're not even trying to make new drugs anymore. They just have jacked up the price of the old ones. They know they have no answers. So. So this became the whole attitude, and this is what started to get um, everything going with the actual uh, of this type of technology. But uh, during this technological period uh, is when patent medicine started to become popular, and as such, they went after radionics. And, uh, you know, we just don't know the full story. Um, Abrams made an awful lot of money, which I think is bad, but apparently Abrams was uh, raising money so that he could open his own hospital and treat people, which certainly would have been a massive uh, undertaking, costing lots of money, and re would have substantiated his technology or not. Now, the problem is, is that none of these people, rightfully or wrong, there's, there's, there's good and bad things to it, but what we are told... Uh, 
which we don't know is true or not, because you got to remember that the other side changes history. They lie. They have all these criminals that head their uh, debunking teams because no serious uh, scientist really wants to get involved in that, not in the front lines, because they'll look like fools. So they bring in the clown college graduates, the con convicted felons, the, um, the government agents, uh, the, the deviates, and all the other goofballs that make up your typical debunker skeptic team. And even the head of the Skeptic Society is not a scientist. Uh, he is a psych uh, He got his degree, I believe, in psychology or some brain stuff, which isn't really considered science for many years. Uh, he has a PhD in history of science. So they're I'm not sure what that means, the history of science. In 1812, we found the atom. Oh, that, I'm a scientist. So the point is, is none of these people really have a background that has any. And of course, what is he going to do? Uh, tell everybody there's all this proof. I mean, even the head of the Skeptics Society, Shermer, has, uh, uh, has all sorts of metaphysical stories. So it's very interesting uh, how we get into all these things. Um, but uh, it is interesting to know that that was the... But the climates change as it always does. And even with uh, massive amounts of death and pandemics going around, you're not going to find the medical industry opening up. They didn't open up. They came up with a fake vaccination. And this fake vaccination is now they've made trillions of dollars on it. We really have no idea what this works because vaccinations haven't worked in the past. If they did, how come we don't have vaccinations for everything? And we don't. We don't have vaccinations for any viral-based, and this is true with AIDS, etc., uh, of the fact that we don't. But we don't have a friend. Uh, half a million to a million people a year die from malaria. Did you get that? Malaria. No, this is not the 1850s in some bad British colonial movie. A, uh, this is the present time and almost a million people a year still die from malaria. Where is the vaccinations? Well, we don't have them, Lord. Get this little thing in your arm. Well, the point is, is all this stuff is bogus. We have no idea what's going to happen down the road. Untested things that may not, untested vaccinations that uh, do nothing even today, if that happens, um, could be something that causes serious problems in the future. We don't know. We'll destroy your liver, your kidneys, other things. These aren't untried, untested vaccinations, except for short periods of time. Um, so getting back to this, so um, so is this uh, pathoclast radionic technology must be considered when it comes to comprehending what Hieronymus faced later on in his career with his patent was popularized in the famous 1950s scientific science fiction magazine. By then, Hieronymus had already witnessed 30 years of medical success using these technologies across America. Well, that's not entirely true because in the 50s and all this stuff, while well, this was around, I'm not sure, we can't get any data. I can't find anybody who's around then that say they were healed, just as we have today. Nobody from uh, the UK where it's legal is coming out saying, I was healed by radionics. A great deal of technical evolution in radionics had occurred in the interim. So uh, with a large number of highly respectable electrical engineers and uh, instrument designers providing expert and experimental insights, there certainly was a lot of people making all sorts of radionic devices. And you can see from our uh, YouTube page uh, these devices out there. And while many of them are made by the same people, there's an awful lot of these devices made, particularly large ones that physicians were using. So all of this was going on at a fast uh, development, non-invasive, revolutionary medical technology had universal appeal because of all of it. He was in the vanguard and well-positioned professionally to advance a technology being created as quickly as the healing successes were being reported. Before him lay uh, a business venture that was uh, successfully providing quick and inexpensive health care to the ordinary person. Again, we don't know this. If it was so great, uh, and this was working out so well for everyone, you would think there had been a much greater uproar. Now, when Ruth Drown was, uh, was persecuted in Los Angeles by the Los Angeles District Attorney, which drag the machines out of all these different doctors and chiropractors. I don't know if doctors were using them either. She was a chiropractor. Um, they dragged the machines out and they physically destroyed them. 
Um, and uh, she then got arrested and everything else. Um, one of the problems we have to understand here is this murky history, which is done deliberately. Um, Albert Abrams, the famous doctor, uh, never put himself up for testing. So he refused to be tested. Even though, yeah, yeah, we're going to test, but never did it. Supposedly, other people in his organization were tested and failed. So um, we don't know if this is true. This is what the gossip is and what the, has been written up in Scientific American, etc., who tested. Uh, the same thing happened supposedly with Ruth Drown. Now, as he said, um, Abrams himself refused to be tested. There are things we have to understand in this world if any of this is valid. Now, you never believe anybody. You have to see proof of manifestation. That's what life is all about. Um, do you have proof that this works if it's something that is that genetic, generic, meaning the fact this is supposed to cure you? Um, so how many people have you treated and what's happened? I just recently did this testing some medical devices from a goofball and nobody got any results from them. Five people that this person claimed he was the son of God and could cure everybody of everything happened for no one. What are we to make of that? Well, we're going to make of the fact that that's a fraud. So uh, plain and simple, it doesn't work. And um, the fact that you go to these people and say, yeah, well, here's a list of people I helped. Well, that isn't good enough because those are people that you know. So unless this can be verified and uh, when this person was questioned, do you have any before and after doctor stuff? No, I don't need no doctors. I don't need no. We don't need no stinking doctors. So the whole idea is that um, this is you do need stinking doctors. You need uh, proof of this. Um, and this is the problem out there. So the problem is also is the corruption factor. Now, were people, and I believe, were people approached, I believe Ruth Drown was probably approached and said, well, you're going to fail at that test, aren't you? Or we're going to destroy you, your family, and everything else. You don't think this happens? You don't think there's corruption, particularly in Los Angeles County, known for its corruption, uh, particularly in these errors uh, where they made Chinatown the movie and other ones like this. And let's just not pinpoint them, the entire country. you got to remember that Al Capone had to be convicted of tax evasion because not a single person in all of the giant city of Chicago would testify against him. Not a single lawyer, judge, police, or citizen. No one would. Why? Well, because you're not going to live too long. And they were all bought off, and the same thing happens everywhere else. So we have to understand that. Is it true? Did they fail? Were they bumpkins? But, of course, when you do that, you make sure you tell everybody that what you have is a fraud. After all, you can't prove it yourself. So we have to be careful if we get into the very complicated issues. And a lot of people don't think about that, but I do, because I happen to know that the entire world is rigged down to your next door neighbor who works with the criminals. This is the way it goes. So were any of these people, was Abram smart enough not to put himself in that position? Uh, now he had a lot of money and could protect himself to a certain degree. The other problem is Abrams then got sick and died in his late 60s from a something that went around. Or was he killed by somebody's radionic device? Well, we don't really know, but he certainly couldn't cure himself at, a, at something he should have been able to cure himself with. He also made a lot of money from radionics. Now, this was supposed to go to his hospital. We think. We don't know. Uh, what happened to that money? What were his plans? All of this was talked about, but it was not materialized. He certainly should have had enough money to get these hospitals going right away, yet he didn't do it because he came from a wealthy family, made a fortune on the radionics and as a doctor in general. He was a medical doctor and he was a high-level medical doctor and appointed to uh, prestigious positions within the traditional medical community. Um, so as we, um, uh, as we see with all this stuff, uh, we need to uh, understand what is going on here with all these things. So let's get back to Hieronymus here. So, um, so he was kind of this in-between. He was a well-respected electronic person. The medical industry still wasn't that big. They didn't have as many pills. You've got to remember that penicillin, the first type of antibiotic, uh, was not um, 
discovered and produced until the late 40s. I believe 1948, some sort of antibiotic was produced. You got to remember, there wasn't even anything before that. Now, before 1948, three to 400,000 people a year died from the flu. Isn't that interesting? So the figures we get today, um, so uh, more people say there's a lot of deaths, may be fairly normal. They just weren't reported before. Uh, so you got to remember, just from the flu, we would lose, I think it was up to half a million. So it was 200 to about half a million, depending on the flu. And we had major flu epidemics where a lot of people were died, even after the Spanish flu. There was one in the late 50s, uh, early 60s, not sure, but um, where a whole bunch of people died as well. Um, well, the point is you're getting all of this stuff, which, of course, um, makes the pill makers in big trouble. If people can go there and just get treated for a fee, um, then there's no problem. Now, again, if there was statistical data, and there seems to be with a lot of things, even using things like color lights, where people were healed fantastically from burns and other things, are all ignored. We need very expensive medicine and... Um, our medical care in ridiculously high-priced facilities and some sort of outrageous drugs. And all of this doesn't work very well. We have not gotten anywhere in that uh, time. Now, Hieronymus saw this to a degree, and he started in the 1950s. He was collaborating with Brigadier General Henry M. Gross, retired at the time, um, and the Homotronic Foundation of UKACO fame. Now, this is a person who made a particular type of radionic device for agricultural purposes. This is mostly for the eradication of insects, etc. Um, again, this seems to be a proven technology, but we don't need these billions of dollars worth of toxic chemicals. Well, the key word there is billions of dollars. So um, you're going against the chemical industries, some of the most corrupt and evil people on the planet um, that have been making these particular types of toxic fertilizers, weed killers, etc. cetera, um, who um, Monsanto, of course, is one of the famous ones, uh, who's now been taken over by one of the most criminal companies in the world, Bayer, uh, the Nazi uh, organization who now bought them. Um, so it comes home to roost yet again. All trails lead back to Nazis. So the whole idea is that uh, we need to understand what's going on in this. So, um, so if you can destroy insects uh, just through using these waves, well, you've saved people billions of dollars, and of course you're preserving the earth and everything else. Well, you bad boy, you're doing good work. Let's get rid of you. So this is how all these things happen, and it's important that people understand the progression of these things. So he was very fortunate. He kind of fell in between here. He had um, he worked with the patent and FDA people to a certain extent, and uh, all of this uh, was coming together. He saw the problems with the medical. He kind of switched over to agricultural. Now, these machines are still out there. There are plans for them, etc. these Henry Gross machines. Do we know that they work? We don't know again. So... You know, nobody in all these years uh, have used these things properly. Now, there was, um, uh, a, there were people and still are people working in agricultural radionics, but you don't really hear anything with them. And, of course, they're probably threatened. They do their little thing, and, um, you know, you either find them or not, um, if they work whatsoever. So you would think that everybody would use this if it works, but you're not. Just like China, who has a billion and a half people and really is uh, has the power to be away from the common control, is still burning coal and other things. Why haven't they went into alternative energies? Why aren't they into hydrogen? Are they that stupid? No, they're paying off all these people. And we live in a coal, petroleum uh uh, controlled uh, market with the World Bank and everything else, and you're not going to be able to do stuff like this, apparently. But there are a whole bunch of other things happening that people don't talk about. There are some companies that are being powered by fuel cells. The hydrogen I talk about, I saw this one time, uh, where big companies have these things. Well, what is going on here? This world is so goofy. Um, 
So we run into the same things with any kind. So it doesn't matter whether this heals people, takes care of our earth, kills insects, and everything is done clean. It doesn't go with regular science. And even though it's tolerated, and because he was able to get away with it to a certain degree, it really doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so we're falling through, and of course, uh, there's a little more information it gives you. Apparently, it took three years for his patented uh, radionic machine to be okayed by the U.S. Patent Office, which apparently uh, was not just pushing his machine through because he was such a great guy. Um, they required extra proof, and he gave them live plant experiments and made a working model of his invention for them. So that went through quite a bit there. Um, he talks that you know the author here and this is why you have to be very careful and of course other uh, um, I'm really the only major radionic expert out there who's read all the material this author in this book which is basically good information is making broad spectrum claims including statements made by a very unstable person known as uh, William Jensen whose machines I show in this uh, on my um, my actual channel on YouTube. Uh, certainly this guy uh, did do a lot of research in Hieronymus and put a lot of information together. Now how valid it is we don't know and he's not another one of those bad sources. Um, So we have to be careful here and we have to, there's a lot of statements in here that uh, this person is making in a very positive book on the subject matter, which um, is a little bit too glossy. But it goes into all the implications here, the type of energy, the fact that the pattern of this machine in itself works, which is true, uh, even though at a very low energetic level, um, and that the machines, when even when not plugged in, worked because of the pattern of it. Uh, so all of these things uh, are true. And of course, symbolic machines do work and have been tested by Stein again from My Machines You Can Build to be effective. And he tested it on his own child to eliminate some sort of acne. So all of these things um, have uh, bring this into a, a whole new reality that we have to um, look at and the Hieronymus device is one of the you know everybody gives it credit because it's patented there are a few other ones I believe that have been patented in England um, and certainly this is a fascinating area that has been proven to be effective but here we go again with the same kind of problems you know I'm a person who wants to uh, see success now I've used these type of technologies for years and have not been really uh, involved in areas that can um, I've used these metaphysically and we're moving into doing research well how does this work with plants and other things how does this work with general energy illnesses that people have. We don't consider uh, people's illnesses uh, to be what is physically um, manifesting. There's a bad energy field. Change the bad energy field and this should balance the person and kick in the natural healing abilities uh, as any uh, natural product. So this you could call is energy vitamins uh, that you'd be giving somebody to realign themselves. Um, so all of this is uh, part of this bigger picture for everyone to understand this mystery, and, and there just hasn't been. I mean, what the author is writing about here is all a bunch of hearsay without any kind of formal backups, and it doesn't take that many difficult things, and there are producers of instruments today that are selling these, some for very high prices, that don't really have any agricultural data either. So where is it? Uh, why isn't it properly put out there? It's also interesting to note how many people were involved in some of these processes when they were popular. Arthur M. Young, the helicopter inventor and wealthy dude um, and friend of Ruth Drown, one of the major I uh, just spoke about, practitioners of all this, uh, actually gotten um, so she was friends with Drown, who was very big in this area. He visited the Devil War uh, laboratories in England. He met with Hieronymus and even funded his research. Um, but he didn't like, of course, the science behind it. The point is, funded what research? 
Where is this? Lots of money were poured into it. And this is the case with a lot of things. And all the research in all these areas seem to have disappeared. Now, this may be deliberate, or uh, you have to wonder if they were getting such fantastic results, why this wasn't pushed ahead. I mean, there's people here with money. Were they attacked? Were they persecuted? What was happening? Here's a guy who invented the helicopter with hundreds of millions of dollars, and he couldn't take... Uh, this technology into agriculture and make sure that it worked so um this uh, is another baffling area we just don't know and it's very hard to get information now because it's so late but this has been the case for 30 years or so most of this stuff has all disappeared uh, a lot of things were um and there is stories of the major drug i should say the major um chemical manufacturers are getting federal people to go out, people who are using radiog machines and say, well, you're broadcasting, you need a license and we're not giving you one and stopping them from doing it. So, I mean, there is information on this of how they went after radionic practitioners. Now, we just again don't know. Does that sound logical? Yeah, well, it does. There's big money here. You think it's too difficult to buy off uh, most people? Um, you know, most people in general have never made a decent income and are easily acceptable to even small amounts of money. What's interesting is that the study of radionics, uh, and improperly, I should say, uh, started to get down to the operator was extremely important to the process. Well, isn't that with everything? If you bring in somebody and say, here's a computer, work this program, well, it's going to be down to the operator how well you understand that program to get results. But they turned it into something else. They turned it into the fact that this is a psychic process. Now, Arthur Young... Um, found all these problems with this because the people who are making the machines really didn't understand it. Apparently Hieronymus didn't understand it all that well or couldn't get it over to people like Young. Young founded and became president of the Foundation for the Study of Consciousness. Now, I'm not sure what he put out again. Uh, so what are we to make of this? So, um, he was also friends with a John Campbell who came up with this article stating that you could just use um, a pattern of a device and supposedly tested it and that this would work. And of course, it does work. You're turning a schematic into a sigil. Sigils communicate with the essence of life. So it's not the actual numbers or patterns. These all tie in, but numbers become sigils. That's what regular science has done. So what you're doing is bringing it down to something that interacts with matter at a high um, manifesting energy level. So if you interact with the energy, you can tell it what to do. Energy tells physical what to do. So, um, so, and supposedly Campbell tested this on plug devices and they work just as well. But, of course, you are still using a device and uh, there is a level of this. And, of course, you know, it's 1950s is quite a bit different from today uh, of uh, what is uh, the, uh, the energies that are, that are uh, all around us. So creating or breaking through energetic informational fields is more difficult now because the humans doing it are much more unstable and of course we have all these wi-fi cell phone satellites i mean we were really living in a toxic soup of these energies we really don't know what they do um So we have to look at all these factors. Apparently, uh, here we go again, there was no major breakthrough or they were either suppressed, threatened, or something happened. We don't know unless people come out and start talking about it. They also have to come out and showing it. A prime example of this is uh, the SE5, which has been around for many years, uh, seems to be a credible technology, um, but there is no real research there and the, um, the manufacturers of that basically are presenting you with nothing. There was a person using called Little Farm Research who was supposed to be using SE5s with all these agricultural things. And they, again, were in operation for many years, produced books and other things, uh, rate books so you could tune into crops. W what is all this? What happened? We don't know. They don't seem to be very active recently, even though I guess there is still a posting for that, uh, Little Farm Research, uh, where you can access old documentation. 
um, the SE5 manufacturers, and of course we understand the problems medically uh, with getting involved. And it's really not medically, but of course if you want to argue that in a court of law, you'll probably be stomped on. You're dealing with informational energetic fields. Um, uh, what uh, the SE5 call it is intrinsic data fields, and that's what they're working with. Basically the same thing. But I mean, you know, they have on their website uh, photos of some sort of deforesting in Germany um, that has been up there for 30 years. And it's not very impressive. So if that's what an SE5 can do, well, that's pretty pathetic. So because it just shows virtually nothing. So um, is that all you have? There's no crop data. There's no anything else there. This again is the problem because of the fearful of Monsanto, the criminal organization that it has been, that I allege. Uh, they have produced uh, these horrible chemicals that have caused all sorts of problems, um, including weed killers and everything else that supposedly are now everywhere on the planet. Um, they have been sued for billions of dollars and then sold to the head Nazis at Bayer who are continuing uh, their horrible research. And uh, ironically, in some sort of bizarre payoff, they bought the company when they were under major criminal or say, legal investigations and have been forced to pay out billions and billions of dollars. Well, what's that all about? Well, that's a story unto itself, isn't it? So the whole idea is that we have to understand all that, what's going on. So um, as with most things in this world, uh, they continue to be out there because of individuals that are outside of the system looking for answers the system won't give them. And of course, that's what this technology, what is the alternative to toxic, dangerous drugs that generally, I would say 99% of the time, don't work? Some drugs are good. Obviously, antibiotics have saved a lot of people's lives. There are critical medicines that take away that symptom, whether it's for an asthma, asthmatic attack or a heart problem, that are valid. We don't want to throw these uh, out, uh, throw out the baby with the bathwater. These things are that we need, but these are bandages. Why do you have that problem to begin with? Now, some things will happen whether you like it or not, and that includes serious illnesses. Uh, I believe that my life was saved by antibiotics on several occasions. Um, these are now not working. So, should we disregard these? And there's some thought that any medications you use pushes an illness down in you um, so that it pops up later somewhere else in a worse illness. But, you know, uh, it's about surviving today, not saying, well, if I make it through this illness and don't use antibiotics, I'll be well in my future. Well, I, I don't buy that. So there's a place for this, but life is never balanced. Life is about being stomped on by the people that have money and control and they buy everybody. Um, so uh, this is the problem. So there is a place for that, just like there's a place for regular medicine, particularly I guess when the body is beat up or in a car crash or hurt seriously. Well, that seems to work. I'm not sure if that's the fact or not, but of course putting people back together again now uh, seems to work. Uh, that are hurt from war or accidents, etc. So there certainly is a place for all that, and people should not be ardently against it. It's difficult to get alternative practices to work for you because they are so under such scrutiny that nobody can assist you. Uh, there are certain problems that you need things for. We have all sorts of organ problems, people that have super high um, pulse rates because of problems with their thyroid is difficult to correct with natural substances. You can't have your pulse going at 130 beats 24 hours a day. This is horrible for you. So you take thyroid medication to bring that down. Now, is that your answer? Well, the problem is you can't take other medications or natural supplements when you're taking thyroid medications. So here we go again. What do you do? So, um, but the suppression of everything alternative has brought these problems up. There isn't a desire or a willingness to 
heal or cure anything. It's all about treating symptoms. That's where the money is. That's what keeps you a doctor, the patients coming to you. That's what keeps the pharmaceutical companies going. This is all part of the bigger picture here. And there's a filthy, stinking, decayed feces written underside of everything, which nobody wants to deal with. But there is a place for that. But the point is, nobody else is allowed to do anything. These types of things should be welcomed by the medical community with the caveat that, listen, be discriminative. Does this work for you? Is it working for you? And these should be legal practices. Maybe the papers uh, by these practitioners or their medical records, whatever you call those, the energetic records, should be sent to a board that looks at them and says, well, are you getting results from this? How is the patient doing? So all of this, uh, there are ways of doing things. Uh, but the point is, is that can we um, integrate these in properly? And there's all sorts of staggering records, apparently, that this stuff works. But it's all been suppressed. We don't really know. Uh, most, uh, sadly, most radionic practitioners in the modern 19th and 20th century all died pretty young. Now, Hieronymus didn't die young. I believe he lived into his early 90s, which says something to begin with. Um, but most other ones did, including Abrams, who died in his late 60s. Uh, so did Adela War. And we go through all of them, uh, famous uh, radionic practitioners. Many of them died very young. So, um, so what are we to make of this? One radionic uh, famous author died of cancer uh, at a pretty young age. I believe he's in the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, Tansley. Tansley, the famous writer of radionics and confused understanding of what it was, or maybe that's what caused him problems. He talked about all this stuff like so many people do, yet here he got cancer and couldn't survive. Here we go again, people. This is what goes on with um, so many things. Does it work? Does it not work? What are they doing? These are all the problems that need to be addressed. Now, IGS is hoping to do some kind of research in these areas uh, to get more definitive information of how all this works and uh, are they able to um, reproduce a lot of these results uh, again um, does it work or not work well uh, it's very difficult to get any information that can be verified and then of course you have to do that and then get it verified yourself now if you want to be verified uh, Hieronymus information well Hieronymus technically uh, we're assuming that these devices produced by the Peter Kelly organization, uh, which are based on his research, are still valid. Do they work or not? Now, they cost a few thousand dollars, certainly a small investment uh, for possibly fantastic results. I mean, people blow thousands and thousands of dollars all the time. I was contacted recently by someone, so well, I'm not going to put that money into something I don't know is 100% guaranteed. Well, nothing in life is 100% guaranteed. You go into the hospital for a minor situation for a couple of days, you're going to walk out of there with a three to $10,000 bill. So the whole idea is that getting a device like this to see if it works even in your own little um, garden or for physical problems you may have, and who doesn't have these energetic problems, uh, I should say physical problems, that can be corrected by energetic fields. Um, so the whole idea, who doesn't have that or someone they know, is it worth learning with people that claim to have the answers? Well, it certainly is. People waste money on golf course memberships, expensive toys in terms of uh, cars and sports cars and memberships and tennis clubs and all the things that people spend thousands and thousands of dollars on. So the whole idea is that can you uh, do this? Uh, you certainly should do this with a credible company like this that gives you all that training and backup. Well, you have to get it. If it's not worth it to you, well, you're not dedicated enough. And you got to get out there and put your money where your mouth is. See what these devices can put out. Now, we're working in all these areas, but it's going to be several years before we get results here, unfortunately. We work with basic metaphysics, trying to increase energetic informational fields around you for protection, for uncrossing, for strong, uh, uh, positive energetic fields around you to keep you well, to produce these results in other areas. 
We don't work on these specific areas as of yet, but we are venturing into this slowly. But the problem is, is that uh, we're the only credible business out there, apparently. And as such, um, we are just looking to find the truth and bring that to the public. We're not trying to sell our tools only. We're in metaphysics. We're not really in these other areas. And we sell things because we can't find credible products produced by others. If we can find credible products that work fantastically, uh, we will be the first ones to publicize them, even if we don't directly make these. We'd be happy to sell other people's devices. So the whole idea is that um, doing this will certainly um, bring this entire field up to a certain level, but everyone is running scared. The last contact I had with someone in uh, the UK, and I don't know how credible it is or not, but the famous author, Nick Frank, said that he was scared to death to do anything. He would share no information and said that anything that you start doing in this area, um, you're in trouble with the government. And that may be very true. You're supposed to work with doctors and other things, even though there's plenty of other medical practitioners through the Radionic Association in the UK that are offering their services. Uh, why he was so strange and apparently greedy, wanting to only sell his devices with absolutely nothing behind them, but he says they work, uh, is quite um, a difficult situation to be in. But this is, again, another typical situation that one radionic practitioner would not work with another radionic practitioner and that um, to share information. Um, but there certainly is a fairly long list of people doing radionic practices uh, based out of the UK. Now, this will be very interesting to work with uh, for people that have serious illnesses um, that uh, we can then test through these people. So what does that mean? So um, we would like to uh, test these people and uh, we've did this in metaphysical range and in metaphysical ranges almost everybody failed. As I said everybody did fail that we tested to do quote love spells and other such things. Uh, they just didn't come through. So what does that mean? So all of this means that uh, do we throw this out? Well, because of the society structure who stomps on anybody who is successful and has something new to keep the old there and to keep those uh, payments coming from old worthless technologies backed up by their paying off of uh, poli uh, politicians, otherwise known as base criminals, um, we cannot find truth, certainly from anything. You have your uh, dumbadamia, who just is nothing more than a religion that cares nothing about truth and just thinks it knows everything and goes by its old books, which are literally based on three to five hundred year old technologies. And if you want to go back to some of it, it's still based in ancient uh, Greek philosophies that go back thousands of years, three, four thousand years, that it goes back to these Greek uh, belief systems. We then have science who also uh, is uh, totally and completely based on something that was produced a hundred years ago from kind of the goofball Einstein who they still uh, follow sheepishly when he was proven to be wrong on just about everything. So you have these kind of problems with so-called science because it doesn't work. And they, but they say it does. And when you come in there and say, well, look at it this way, well, that makes no scientific sense. We were not taught that. We know everything. We're not going to look at this. It doesn't matter whether it works or not. We don't care whether it works. The book said it doesn't work. But you demonstrated them. So, yeah, but it's, in, it's impossible because that goes against our belief system. So the point is their belief system or their religion of science holds everybody back. So that's where we're at right now. It's a fascinating, but you need to understand that in the world and hopefully we'll be able to. But you know, they don't want this kind of information coming out. They don't want people to verify this information because it hurts all the criminal industries that run this world. So when you try and do this, you're under attack as IGOS is today and has been for many years. 
years. Uh, they want to stop this organization. They want to stop me from getting the information out to you. And this is just another one of the many areas uh, that stops these kind of technologies, which is uh, uh, involved with all the criminal elements that run this world. So it's a very complicated world out there. And if you think people are not influenced, if you think your neighbor and family can be trusted, well, you're wrong because all these people are threatened and bought off uh, to eliminate anybody who comes in who wants to say differently. So it's a very, very dank, stinking, feces written reality, written reality that we live in, and you need to understand that. So finding truth or finding gnosis is extremely difficult, and those that do have it certainly will be marginalized at the best and at the worst eliminated. Until next time.